sorry to have to split this into two separate sessions, but um, I got a couple of phone calls. I had a couple of visitors, and so I had a feeling doing this in my office was probably not a good idea, but that's okay. This is part two of my 203 lecture. Um, we're going to talk about covering speeches as news in this segment, and this will get us up to date. So the other section should have been about 23 or 24 minutes long, and this one should be uh, much shorter. So, okay. Speech stories. Speeches are when one person gets up in front of a bunch of other people and tells that group about whatever he or she um, is an expert in. Um, this could this expertise could come from study or it could come from life experience or something of that sort. Um, usually, the speech maker is a good speech maker. Usually, they know what they're excuse me what they're doing, but sometimes um, that doesn't happen. Nonetheless, there are two things that usually make something make a speech news. One is the topic, and probably 80% of your speeches that you'll go cover as a reporter, as news, are you're there because of the topic. The second is the person that's making the speech. If the person is prominent, if the person is a uh, important person in that community or in that state or that nation or whatever, then pretty much whatever they say is golden, and so it has to be covered by the news media. So. We're going to a speech, and we're going to take notes on that speech. If it's a formal speech, we know in advance that it's going to, uh, that it's going to be held at 2 o'clock on Tuesday. We know in advance probably kind of what they're going to talk about. That's a more formal uh, organization for a speech. Sometimes you run into informal speeches. Sometimes someone gets really fired up at a city council meeting and stands up and waxes poetic, and that becomes an informal speech. Sometimes um, you'll go to a gathering of some sort, and there will be important people, maybe a senator or a, a legislator or something of that nature present, and the leader will say to that person, would you like to make a few words, say a few words, and they'll say sure, and they'll go ahead and do just exactly that. So, um, formal and informal speeches, um, most of the time the formal speeches, you can, you've got a pretty clear idea as to whether they're news or not. A lot of times those informal speeches just happen, and you don't know that they're news until after you've gone back and sort of looked at them and gone, hmm, that was, you know, that's something pretty important. Maybe we ought to include that in our news coverage. Okay. I strongly suggest that as a beginning news reporter that you use a recording device when you are covering speeches, and you use your notebook, too, so that when you are writing down um the notes for the speech, you are also writing down in the, in the margin of your notebook um, where in the speech it occurred. If you've got a counter on your uh, recording device, that can be very, very helpful. Um, that way, you can go back to those exact places in your recording and um, pick up the exact quote, the direct quote. Because, of course, in a speech story, you're going to want to use as many direct quotes as you possibly can. You're going to want to paraphrase some because you don't want it to just be one long quote like the speech. There's not much point in writing a story if that's all you're going to do is open quotes at the beginning of the story and close quotes at the end of the story. And quite honestly, um, people would be pretty bored with that. So uh, notating where in the, um, in the recording you can pick up that particular quote or pick up that particular section of of the speech or something of that sort is going to be really helpful for you, okay? Um, most of the time, speeches are organized uh, into three parts, okay? The first is introductory remarks. These may be a true introduction. Um, I'm Maggie Williams. I am a journalism professor at the University of Southern Mississippi, and today I am here to talk to you about the color purple. I hope by the time I finish, I will have informed you enough about the color purple that you will uh, want to move forward in your study of that color. But there's my introduction, okay? It could be that there are these are just what we call introductory remarks. Thank you so much for coming today. I uh, appreciate this opportunity to visit with you. I have not been in the area in a while, but I'm glad to be back, um, and I'm pleased to see you. And I want to um, uh, make these remarks brief, so let's get started. Okay. 
Um, or it could be a joke or some sort of thank you. You know, thank you for inviting me back to the University of Southern Mississippi. It's been a long time since I've been here. I uh, graduated in 1992, and I've been traveling the world since then or something of that sort. The purpose of the introductory remarks is to get you oriented towards what the speech is going to be about and how the speaker speaks. We hope that the speaker is a good speaker. We hope that the speaker is clear and, and does what he or she says they're going to do. Okay. Um, after we have the opening remarks, we move into the body of the speech. The body of the speech is where you're going to get the largest um, portion of the information that you're going to need in order to write your news story. This is where you're going to get kind of things like definitions and explanations. It's where you're going to get background. It's where you're going to get um, the speaker's point of view on a number of subjects. They may or may not use outside sources. If they do use outside sources, you can judge from what they say whether or not they these are good sources, really credible sources, and that sort of thing. Um, the, and, and this is going to be the, the biggest part of the speech. And then the conclusion is often where you find the news. This is where your speaker will say, so after all of this that I've told you today, obviously you can see why I'm voting for or against this particular measure in Congress, and so on and so forth. Um, this is where you might get a call to action. You know, oh, I'm such a great candidate. I've told you all my, my um, um, experience and all of my uh, reasons for wanting to be your new mayor. Um, I hope that you will... Uh, go out on November the 7th and vote for me because I'm calling you to action. I'm asking you to take to take a step there. Okay, so you've got these three different parts of the speech. If the speaker is a good speaker, most of the time it's all going to kind of seamlessly thread together so that you're not going to know, okay, he's through with his introductory remarks, now he's moving into the body, and now we're in the conclusion. You know, it's going to be one smooth sail all the way through um, to uh, make it like we want it to be. Okay? All right, your speaker, you need to list your speaker's credentials somewhere in the speech story, but your, but your lead on the speech story should definitely not be, um, President Rodney Bennett uh, made a speech Tuesday at 2 o'clock in Bennett Auditorium on the USM campus. The fact that they made the speech is not the important factor. The fact that they, of what they said in the speech is what you should lead with. Many times back in the 60s and 70s, um, news uh, editors and such would tell the, the reporter, you know, lead with a quote and end with a quote. That was kind of a formula for writing a speech story. It's not as prominent these days, but it's still an option that you can certainly consider is to use a quote or a portion of a quote in your lead Oftentimes, the speaker will, will do that uh, justice for you. He, he or she will give you, um, in his conclusion or somewhere during his speech, a pretty good capsule of what he's talking about. And that way, you can use that for the speech. You can use your, your body, that, that for your lead. You use the body of the speech to help develop that lead. And then you move forward from there to your conclusion. Okay. We want, if we, if we aren't going to say, you know, Dr. President Rodney Bennett, University of Southern Mississippi President Rodney Bennett made a speech Tuesday at 2 in Bennett Auditorium, somewhere in the second or third paragraph we probably need to say, Rodney Bennett is the president of the University of Southern Mississippi. Um, he was speaking in front of approximately 800 students in Bennett Auditorium on the USM campus Tuesday. Okay, so we want to tell the where and tell, and tell the who more fully, completely identify that person. You always want to estimate your crowd size because that oftentimes is the um, key to knowing whether or not you really have a newsworthy event or not. Um, because the speech, is, oh, I've already said that, because the speech is one long direct quote, you will definitely want to use some quotes. Just because somebody is an expert on something or just because someone has something to say about something, it does not necessarily mean that that person is going to be a good speaker. You know, we hope so, but that doesn't always happen. Um, so you, you have to pay close attention to even the bad speakers, even the ones that, that have a monotone, because if they are newsworthy, if what they're saying is newsworthy, then you might miss something if you um, don't um, take that into account. 
Now, Tuesday in class, we're going to look at some samples of speeches, and we're going to uh, talk about how to write the story a little bit more fully. But this is all for today's lecture. Um, I hope I haven't put you to sleep too much. Um, let me see. Um, when, we, um, when we're in class Tuesday, we'll finish this up a little bit, and then we'll do some writing. Okay, so I'll see you all Tuesday. Thanks again for indulging me in this way, and I hope you have a good weekend. Thanks.